Wait, wait. Hold up. Are you a hunter? Because if you're not a hunter, this proficiency is not for you. But if you think you might want to be a hunter, stick around and see what dragon scale leatherworking can offer you in game and how to actually utilize those stupid dragon scales you've looted in the past but never had a use for. Now, as you'll see, I think the devs kept the shamans in mind when making this set of patterns, but it feels like it was incomplete. Kinda like the rest of vanilla. So hunters are going to utilize this skill the most. As early as level 40 and a minimum leatherworking skill of 225, you can choose to be a dragon scale leatherworker. The alliance are going to need to travel to Azara to find their trainer, and the horde need to visit Thorcalf Dragon Eye in the Badlands. Now before you go, you're going to want to bring some materials ahead of time so you can complete the quest right away and begin learning your new patterns. You're going to need two tough scorpid breastplates, two tough scorpid gloves, and ten worn dragon scales. Yeah, actually, before you visit these trainers, you're going to need to make a trip to Tenaris. Now, if you don't know a fellow leather worker who has the recipe to these chests or the gloves, you can find these recipes dropped off the Waste Wander Bandits and Thieves in Northeastern Tenaris. Both of these recipes are dropping at a 6% rate, so it shouldn't take you too long to farm them, and there's a lot of these mobs in the area. In order to craft two chess pieces and two gloves, you're going to need 40 scorpid scales, 36 thick leather, 10 worn dragon scales, and 12 silken thread. So add 10 dragon scales to that original quest amount. The scorpid scales aren't very hard to obtain because they can be skinned off the scorpids in the area and the beast should drop thick leather in the area as well. Now after you've acquired the patterns and materials in Tenaris, you're going to need to farm those last 20 worn dragon scales. You can visit the outside area of Sunken Temple or obtain some worn scales inside the dragons in the instance, or more practically, farm the whelps in eastern badlands or the red dragonkins found all over Anixia's lair in southern Dustwallow Marsh. Alright, now you're ready to become a dragon scale leather worker. Upon completing the quest, you'll have access to four recipes that are taught from the trainer. Now most practically, you're going to be able to utilize the dragon scale gauntlets and breastplate during the leveling process because of its low leather working requirement and low level requirements. They've got some odd stats though, like the gloves grant plus 6 spirit and the chest has a use ability of absorbing 600 magical damage for 2 minutes as well as every type of resistance you'd want. Now let's take a look at each item by their sets. First, we've got the black dragon scale set. This is pure end game gear, granting a ton of fire resistance, stamina, loads of attack power, and hit and critical strike. Now, all hunters that step foot into Molten Core, and even DPS shamans, are going to be looking for this set in order to get invited to Tuesday Night Raid Night. If you own all the recipes to this set, especially early on come Classic, you're going to be bringing in the dough, that's for sure. Let's look at where these recipes can be found. The breastplate and the boots are patterns that can be found in Blackrock Depths from two different vendors inside the instance. Plugger Spaz Ring is selling the breastplate on what seems to be a timer, which is kind of weird because it's inside of an instance, but if the recipe isn't spawned when you get there, hang around for 15-20 minutes and it should pop up. Don't reset the instance and start over. As for the boots, this pattern can be bought off Loktos Dark Bargainer, requiring an honored reputation with the Thorium Brotherhood. The leggings and shoulders patterns are held by the Anvil Rage Captains and Marshals found at the end of the instance. I guess it makes sense. The boys down here are masters at fire resistance. They had to be. There's only a few mobs found in this very last room of Blackrock Depths, and they're dropping these recipes at a 4% rate. This farm could be infuriating. But don't give up. Just reset. Start again. Now, because of this, if these patterns drop for your group while you're running through Blackrock Depths, the winner's going to be pretty happy. I hope there's not a hunter in my group. <laughs> That's all I can say. Next, let's look at the green dragon scale set. Green for nature resistance, right? This set's pretty odd because of its stamina, spirit, nature resist combo, but it has some pretty sweet set bonuses. It just feels counterintuitive because that spirit stat is an intellect. Now if it was intellect, this set would be insane. Regardless, 
the only thing I wish was that the gauntlets required level 49 so we could see some crazy shaman, twink healer, and battlegrounds with an endless mana pool. As for hunters, it might be fun to run around those last 10 levels with loads of spirit and mana regeneration, allowing you to cruise to 60 grinding mobs. In a PvP setting, the nature resistance would be good in combating rogues with their poisons, certain druid and shaman spellcasting abilities, and hunter stings and snake trap. Now in regards to picking up these patterns, the breastplate is going to be bought off a vendor in the Swamp of Sorrows, Masa Tiander. Of course, it is a rare recipe, so you may have to do some camping in order to get this one. The leggings recipe is dropped off a mob in the Sunken Temple, the Merc Worm. The recipe's dropping at a 4% rate, and there's 12 of these worms in each instance. So while you're farming your worn dragon scales, you could come to Sunken Temple and get a chance at picking up these leggings recipe. Now, of course, the gloves in this set are trained from the Dragon Scale Trainer at level 280. Next, we've got the blue Dragon Scale set. Now here's the intellect we were looking for, but they traded the stamina stat for spirit in this collection. This would fit more of a healer role like a Resto Shaman because of its intellect pool and set bonus that increases the damage and healing done by magical spells by 28. Of course, because hunters use intellect in vanilla, this is still a viable set for them, especially if you're going for a spell damage build hunter. Now I want you guys to take this one in the comment section, but I'm not sure if spell damage hunter is a thing in vanilla. I think it was originally, but at some point it got patched out, like arcane shot deals magical damage, but it's not considered a spell, so it doesn't get the bonus spell damage effect. But abilities like serpent sting still would. Again, someone with that knowledge, they can be found in the comments. The set also provides arcane resistance, which would be helpful mainly against hunter spells in a PvP setting. Of course, they have arcane damage spells such as arcane shot, concussive shot, flare, hunter's mark, volley. And druids have moonfire and starfire. And then, unfortunately, you're not going to encounter a lot of arcane mages. But they do have polymorph and counter spell that are considered arcane, which would be pretty sweet to resist. The breastplate recipe can be bought off of vendor Blimo Gadget Spring found in Southern Azara. This place can be a little tricky to get to, and if you fall below the path into the water, you're just going to hate yourself because the walk back is long and filled with elite mobs. The shoulder recipe is found in the same area as Blimo and is dropped off the level 53 to 55 elite cliff breakers at a 12% rate. It shouldn't take you too long to find this recipe. But make sure you distinguish the cliff breakers from the thunderers because they look the same. And of course, the legging recipe in the set can be learned from your dragon scale trainer at level 300. Now let's take a look at the craftable epics that are available to dragon scale leather workers. I'll tell you what, the dream scale breastplate is absolutely number one nature resist male chess piece in the game. And the cloak, it's popping with that rich royal looking purple. And then the gloves are maxed out across the board on resistances. Now don't sleep on these chromatic gauntlets equip abilities. If spell hunters a thing in vanilla, you can stack these gloves with the blue dragon scale set and go deal some major spell damage crits. If you want that best in slot nature resistance chest, the pattern can be bought off of Andel Windspear and Silithus. Now this is going to require an exalted reputation with the Scenarian Circle. This is one of the few times you see a recipe requiring exalted rep, but the chess piece does have some pretty sweet stats and is probably going to sell well come Anquirage time, so you could prepare to make some big bucks off of this guy. For the epic gloves in the set, we got to go back to our boy Loktos in Blackrock Depths and he requires a revered reputation with the Thorian Brotherhood. Now, the cloak is dropping at a 2% rate in Dire Mall North from Not Thimblejack's Cash. We took a look at this loot table in the elemental video and this is where the shifting cloak recipe was found. Again, this recipe isn't bind on pickup so it can be sold on the auction house and you will see it up there for a hefty price if you don't want to farm Dire Mall North caches. Hashtag me. Oh, I almost forgot. The red dragon scale set. I think Blizzard did too. This is what I was talking about earlier. I think dragon scale leatherworking had shamans in mind 
but it never actually got completed. I mean, for a chess piece only to have plus 12 fire resist? But it definitely, the red set was going to be a set for Resto Shamans. It's so sad, and I, I've been noticing this lately, all the research I've been doing, Vanilla just had a couple things that were incomplete. Now, if for some reason you're dying to complete your Dragon Scale set and farm the subpar chess piece, it's dropping off the final boss in Lower Blackrock Spire, General Dracosav, at 4%. Overall, the Dragon Scale set is the way to go if you're a hunter and you want to embrace the leatherworking skill. The immersion it adds to your character's role in the world, and using Dragon Scales to make armor, let's be honest, is pretty badass. Some of the items and sets in Dragon Scale leatherworking can make you a lot of money too. That black Dragon Scale set could be made in bulk if you have all the recipes and distributed to Molten Core Raiders. The Dreamscale Breastplate also is going to sell extremely well come Anquirage time with its nature resistance. The Prerequisite Quest also in my opinion is an added bonus to the skill. You get to go on a little venture in Tenaris and then farm some dragons to prove you're worthy of this training. Yo! I hope this video was helpful in deciding whether or not you're going to choose Dragon Scale Leatherworking or not come Classic. But I just want to give a quick update, guys. I'm really appreciating all the support that I'm getting on this channel. The likes and the comments. I'm having tons of conversations on all my videos, and it's great. Um, I'm back at school. I'm not in the closet anymore. I need to put some stuff up on the wall. But uh, I, like I said, I'm going to have tons more professional videos. If there's anything different you want to see than the style that I'm currently doing, if you want it done faster, if you want me to elaborate more on something else, don't elaborate so much on some things. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Grace for days. Out.